Hey you guys, welcome back to our channel, the number one place for people who love design, art and everything creative. My name is Laszlo, I do graphic design and illustration and this video is about how to make GIFs in Photoshop. Now I have made a video about this topic a couple weeks ago in which we took a piece of graphic and applied some frame by frame animation techniques in order to make it move. Now that tutorial works very well for logos and vector based graphics and icons that kind of stuff so if you want to animate something like that check out that tutorial. In this tutorial we're gonna do something different, we're going to learn about a way of animating photos in Photoshop. We're gonna take a still image and make it slightly move to create what they call a cinema graph. Let's jump straight in. Now if you're unfamiliar, cinema graphs are still photographs in which a minor, ever so slight movement occurs. Like these examples here. It is a great effect and they are much simpler to make than one would think. All you need is a good photo and a short piece of video footage which we will mesh together in Photoshop. Now let me just show you, this is what we are about to design. It's a Halloween inspired jack-o'-lantern image in which the light is going to slightly move and blink inside the pumpkin just like a candle flame would. Now, I truly believe that there is something psychologically captivating about this kind of content. The thing is when you look at certain types of media, your brain very quickly gets accustomed to them. Like if you're scrolling to images, your brain just knows that you're watching still images and it doesn't expect it to move. Likewise when you're on YouTube and you're watching a bunch of videos, you know that you're watching videos. Your brain automatically expects moving content. But when the form of media suddenly changes without a warning, for example a piece of video becomes a still image, suddenly your brain feels a little shocked, maybe even cheated. You see what I mean? I am using a free photo I have found on Unsplash. And as for the video, I decided to make my own footage. I encourage you to do the same. I know it can be very convenient to use stock footage you find online, but I'm a firm believer that we, designers and artists, should break away from the pixel pusher stereotypes, step away from the computer desk every now and then and make real stuff. Trust me, you will create more unique solutions for your design problems this way. And making these is not as difficult as you would think. All I have used here is a couple of simple household items to make pretty cool effects. Don't be afraid to experiment and get creative, all you need is a couple seconds of video footage that you can just record on your phone. Ok, we got our raw file so let's open up Photoshop. In terms of size let's go with the recommended format for Instagram portrait post which is 1080 pixels wide and 1320 pixels long at 72 pixels per inch. Then what I do is I look for my footage and just drag and drop it in. Now if you have seen my previous tutorial you know that we are going to need the timeline open. This time instead of creating frame animation we are going to click on create video timeline. This function automatically recognizes that you have dropped a video file in and just like in any other video based Adobe app you can play and pause this footage by hitting the spacebar. Now let's drop in our photograph as well and make sure it fills out the canvas nicely. Just play around with how your image fits the composition the best. Now if you look in our timeline the image is here between 8 seconds and 13 seconds. Our grief shouldn't be that long so what I'm gonna do is grab my video footage and pull it from the side, just like that. Then let's put both of these files onto the beginning of the timeline and make sure they are the same length. I'm setting mine up for 7 seconds, that should be more than enough time for an effect to play out nicely. What I want to do here is make my video footage visible through the holes of the pumpkin, you know the eyes and the mouth and all that, so I am clicking here on my photo to add a new mask. And on this new mask I erase these bits I don't need. Something like that. Now whenever you want to check your animation you just hit the spacebar to see how it looks at the moment. Then hit again to stop. As you can see what I'm doing is I'm basically painting with a soft low opacity eraser to make these holes in my image. Now take your time and just blend the two layers onto each other in a way that works best for your composition. Then I thought in order to make these blend together a bit better I'm going to need another layer on top. This layer I put on overlay mode and I paint with a soft brush some black and white spots over the image. Just so the overall composition will feel a bit nicer, a bit brighter and easier on the eyes. Now in a minute we are going to play with the opacity setting so I am filling my background layer in with black, with the paint bucket just like that. Ok now here comes the difficult bit. 
we need to adjust some keyframes here by opening up this little tab on the video clip. If you have never done stuff like this before, keyframes are basically telling the selected layer how to act at certain points of the timeline. As you can see, I put a keyframe in here at the very beginning, so now if I change the opacity settings of the layer here, that means that the footage will appear at 72% at the selected point in time. Now the moment if we check our video, the layer is appearing at 70% for the whole animation. This is because there's only one keyframe set up on my timeline. I want to do the same for my overlaid color modifying layer on top as well. So grab the timeline slider, put it to the beginning. Actually since there's only going to be one keyframe, you can put it wherever you want. Then hit the opposite keyframe, this little diamond here. Yeah, something like that, that looks good. Now I want to make sure that my GIF will feel like an endless loop and the way to do that requires us to play with these opacity settings a bit more. First let's duplicate the video footage on the bottom. I just selected it in my layers panel then holding down the alt key I dragged it down to copy. Now here on the timeline what you want to do is cut most of the end parts of this duplicate footage by grabbing the right side of it and bring it in. All we need is a second or two of this video. Now I know this can get confusing so stay with me. What we are duplicating here is the very beginning of the video clip and we're gonna put this at the end to blend these two beginning parts onto each other so a loop will feel like a seamless transition whenever the video ends. What you need to do is on this duplicate clip put a keyframe into the very end that has the final level of opacity you want to work with. In my case it's about 65%, for you it might be 100, doesn't matter, just make it visible. And on the very beginning, put another keyframe in and take the opacity down to zero. The way keyframes work is they will operate in a way that as time goes on, the opacity will gradually build up from zero to your final one between two points in time. Then what you want to do is the opposite of this on the original video clip. So leave the time slider where we put the last keyframe on the other clip, add one keyframe on this clip, put it to 65%, then go to the end of the timeline and put another keyframe in and set the opacity to zero. Now in theory, as these two effects are doing the exact opposite opacity changes, it should look like they are balancing each other out visually. So the transition between the very beginning of the GIF and the very end will be seamless. I can only hope that that made sense. Feel free to go back and listen to this step again if you are stuck. Now let's see if all of our hard work has paid off and export out this bad boy. So you go file, save for web, to open up this panel we need and make a GIF. This will take a couple seconds as depending on your computer, processing all this info and turn video into a GIF can be a difficult task for your processor. Most of these settings are alright as they are, just make sure you are saving out in GIF format and that it's got 256 colors. This is the most GIFs can handle. Also you can check if your GIF will be saved out as an endless loop here. Then here you just click on save, give it a name and it's all done. This is what it looks like in action. Once you grasp the basic idea how this way of GIF making works, you can do all kinds of crazy things to develop your ideas even further. Like I've made another version here where I worked on a bit of a smoke footage I have found online to make this version. I know, I know, how hypocritical, early on I have told you to use your own video clips, but sometimes I understand that it's just not possible. Also, I wanted to let you know why most of these stock footages have black backgrounds in case you're wondering. It's because they are trying to help you. If you put this footage to screen layer mode, that means the black will disappear, leaving you only with the parts you do want to use in your GIF. It's pretty cool. Also important to note, once you are done, you don't have to save these out as GIFs, you can actually render them as video files as well. Sometimes that can be the better option actually, as GIFs tend to lose a lot of picture quality, not to mention these days social platforms like Instagram actually do favor mp4 files to GIFs. All you have to do is go export, render video, all these settings are optimized for mp4 files by default, so you just have to ok everything and voila, you got yourself a clip you can post on your Instagram, easy. 
Okay, before you go, I just want to tell you again, cinemagraphs are such a great way to spice up your social media feed. For the very simple reason I mentioned earlier, it's unexpected. It is a bit harder for people to decode this kind of content, as opposed to still images or video. An image that slightly moves in places is something that people don't expect, and it's gonna surprise people. It's gonna make them look again, it's gonna make them spend a bit more time looking at your content, which is exactly what you want on social media. Up your view times a little bit. Okay, let me know down in the comments if you need some further help with this, and join our little design tribe if you're interested in this kind of content. We make videos about interior design, architecture, branding, illustration, general art tips and advice, all that good stuff. So if any of that interests you, feel free to subscribe. Okay, that's it for today. I'll see you guys this time next week. Bye.